Hey guys, Richard from Digital Foundry here, taking a look at 1080p performance on the R9 Nano, the most powerful 6-inch graphics card on the market right now. The Nano uses exactly the same Fiji processor as the top-end AMD Radeon R9 Fury X, but with reduced dynamic clock speeds that keep the chip operating at around 175 watts. Combined with an excellent heatsink setup and a very quiet fan, it's a card tailor-made for small form factor PCs. And that makes comparing the Nano with other GPUs a rather difficult task. What class of hardware is it, and what kind of alternative products should we be comparing it with? AMD itself prefers to compare the Nano with the GTX 970 Mini, the most powerful GPU at the exact same form factor. Obviously the Nano is a whole lot faster, but the GTX 970 is also a lot cheaper, with the Nano itself costing exactly the same as the full Fury X, so that's around £510 or $650. So for our comparison points, we've chosen the other Fury products in order to get a sense of how the Fiji chip scales across all three Fury GPUs and the GTX 980 and the GTX 980 Ti. Obviously, both of these cards are significantly larger than the Nano, but equally it would be remiss of us not to point out that there are a big bunch of mini ITX cases out there that can house full-length GPUs. It's also worth pointing out that the Fiji chip is built to get the best results from higher resolutions. Here at 1080p it's generally faster than the much cheaper GTX 980, but not dramatically so, and there are some titles where the cheaper Nvidia card is actually faster. But it's the comparisons with the air-cooled R9 Fury here that are quite interesting. The Nano is almost as fast, and looking at the card in action it, it gets close to its target 1GHz clock speed in a lot of these games. So our theory here is that the GPU is actually underutilized, allowing more power to be diverted towards raw clock speed. So you may wonder why we haven't included overclocking benchmarks. Well, the problem with the Nano is that it is thermally limited, both in terms of its design, it really doesn't like to go above 75 degrees Celsius, and also in terms of real life. In a small form factor case, heat dissipation is a real challenge. But we ran the Nano on an open air testbed to get an idea of its theoretical maximums, and assuming you can displace the heat, pushing power tune up to 50% gets you around 11% more performance. That being the case, in truth AMD has judged the sweet spot of the Nano's stock speed pretty well. Anyhow, we'll leave you with the rest of the benchmarks, 9 titles on the block here in total and some interesting results. Give us a like if you enjoyed the vid and subscribe to Digital Foundry to get all our vids delivered to your feed. Thanks for watching. There's a gun underneath the dashboard! Use it! Are we safe? <laughs> Probably not. On your right! Shoot! Them! Watch out! Ambush! Clear the bridge! Psycho! This train is...
is full of highly explosive material. Yep. Your plan? Yeah. Come on, you bastards. Hostiles in our 